Hi everyone, it's been a while since last time I made a video of what quant interviews look like. And honestly, it was kind of a surprise for me because I didn't expect so many people to be interested in this topic. And over the past few months, I've received a lot of messages asking me things like, what books should I read? What major should I study? Or is there any good materials to prepare for the interviews? So in today's video, I just want to give a quick overview and go over some ways you can prepare if you're really trying to break into this industry. Hopefully, it can help you make your first step a little easier. First, I want to briefly go over what quant actually means because it's a really broad term and it can refer to different things from doing alpha research, building risk models, constructing portfolios, or even monetizing signals at buy side companies like Citadel, D Shell, or Jump Trading. It can also include support roles like pricing, risk, or desk quant positions at sell side banks like Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, or Barclays. Even within the quant world, there are different types of roles like researchers, traders, developers, and each of them has its own set of requirements. Um, just a quick heads up, like I'm not going to cover any things related to developers because that is really not my area. But you can simply think of developer as a software engineer in trading industry and they mainly work on infrastructure, trading system design or production code deployment. So when it comes to the difference between researchers and traders, here's a simple way to think about it. For researchers, they mainly focus on generating ideas and trading signals. They do statistical analysis to test hypotheses. They use programming and math models to make predictions. Um, they run backtest and optimizations to validate those ideas. On the other hand, traders are more involved in execution, like placing orders, monitoring trading book, and managing risk. So basically, traders have to be quick and adaptive under different market conditions, and always make sure strategies are executed well and risk exposure stay under control. However, the line between these roles can be blurry and really depends on firms. For example, traders at Gen Street can definitely do side projects to generate more trading ideas. And at Hassan River Trading, algo developers are basically just quant researchers. So it's always good to do a bit of research on how different companies define these roles, and it will help you to figure out which type of quant path you actually want to pursue. In general, the hiring bar and interview difficulty can be roughly ranked by this. Buy side is harder than sell side, researcher is harder than trader, and in terms of focus area, the rank should be like alpha research, then portfolio optimization, followed by derivatives pricing, and finally risk or desk support. But again, this is just a broad overview, and this hierarchy doesn't always apply. Things can vary a lot depending on whether you are working at mid versus high frequency trading, pot shops versus centralized teams, or even across different asset classes. Regardless of the type of quant you are aiming for, the core scale sets are pretty similar. At the very least, you have to be solid in mathematics and programming, and ideally have a relevant major from a generally recognized college. By relevant majors, I mean STEM fields like statistics, math, physics, or computer science, because the truth is, there's a pretty strong stereotype in this industry. Many people think it's easier to teach someone with a strong math background about finance than to teach a finance major advanced level math. Some portfolio managers won't even bother looking at resumes that don't come from these STEM backgrounds. Unless you have something exceptional, like achievements in coding or math competitions, strong publications, or relevant research experiences. So to be honest, if you are serious about becoming quant and you are not considering any traditional roles like equity research or fundamental launcher analyst, majoring in economics or finance can actually put you at a really disadvantaged position compared to other candidates. Of course, like if you are studying PhD in finance or economics, that's a totally different story. Also, the requirement is different between researchers and traders. Like I mentioned earlier, Researchers need a strong statistical modeling skill and an ability to do deep independent research. So typically this role requires a graduate level degree and most people work as a quant researchers are PhD. On the other hand, for traders, a bachelor degree is usually enough because this role doesn't rely on using advanced math to solve complex models. 
It's more about quick thinking and making fast decisions under different market scenarios. But I'm not saying that having only bachelor's degree means you have totally no shot at becoming a researcher. It's just rare. People who make it without a graduate level degree are extreme outliers or exceptionally talented. So if you think you are that kind of person and you have your own edge to compete with other smart PhD, it's definitely still worth applying it. As long as you meet the basic requirements, you might make it past the first screening and get invited to technical interviews. So in the next section, I will talk about some of the core knowledge areas you should focus on when doing interview preparation and what topics are usually covered. Undoubtedly, you need a solid foundation in basic math like linear algebra, calculus, statistics, and probability, and at least one of the programming languages like Python, C++, or C Sharp. These are absolutely essential. On top of that, it's always good to learn some advanced level math like real analysis and measure theory. These are helpful for you to build a rigorous foundation for calculus and understand things like limits, convergence, generalized integration, and measurable functions. These foundations are essentially important for diving into advanced probability theory. After that, you can start learning some applied probability topics like stochastic process, learn how to model randomness that evolves over time, with concepts like state transitions, martingales, Markov chains, and Brownian motion, from there, you will get into stochastic calculus using tools like Ito's lemma and stochastic differential equation to analyze these dynamics. All of these will give you a much deeper understanding about derivatives pricing and the risk-neutral framework used in quant finance. Taking some applied math courses like optimization theory or numerical linear algebra can also be really helpful. You will learn some practical tools like linear programming, quadratic programming, conic transformations, second water cone problems, or mixed integer programming. These are really helpful to solve large-scale portfolio optimization problems under constraints. And personally, I think the most important thing is advanced statistics. So course like mathematical statistics, it can give you a rigorous foundation about the statistical inference and help you really understand how estimation likelihood methods or hypothesis testing work. And I think another practical one is multivariate statistics. It teaches you how to work with multivariable problems and deal with high dimensional issues like covariance estimations or classification tasks. And finally, statistical simulation is super useful too. You can learn techniques like bootstrapping, MCMC, and Gibbs sampling. These are really powerful tools to help you approximate Bayesian or other complex models that don't have closed form solutions. The last key area I want to talk about is statistical modeling because prediction plays a really huge role for a researcher. It's not all about predicting asset returns and volatility. You can basically predict anything that can give you information on edge. So that's why the ability to extract complex pattern from data and make robust and reliable forecast is so important for researchers to design data-driven strategies. To build these prediction scales, you should take courses like time series analysis, econometrics, regression analysis, or machine learning. These courses will teach you how different models work, their strengths and weaknesses, and how to use regularization to mitigate overfitting issues in such a low signal to noise environment. As for programming, because we're not talking about developers and we don't have to master everything, actually just need to be comfortable with object-oriented programming, some basic data structures, algorithms, and some parallelization. These should be enough for most of the quant research roles. However, if you're applying to a tech-heavy high-frequency trading firm where latency really matters, they might expect a strong system level programming scales as a basic requirement. The last thing I want to talk about is extracurricular reading. There are tons of great books outside of school that can help you deepen your understanding. If you're just starting out and want a broad overview of quant investing, especially if you don't have enough technical background yet, I would recommend you to check out some earnings chance books like quantitative trading or machine trading. They are pretty accessible and solid to help you understand how things work in the industry. 
Then once you are freshman or sophomore and have some basic math under your belt, if you are interested in equities, you can move on to more advanced level books like Active Portfolio Management by Richard Grenard and Quantitative Equity Portfolio Management published by Chapman and Hall. These go a lot deeper into modeling and real-world strategy design. If you are interested in derivatives trading, there are some must-read books for me. My top picks, the first one is Options, Futures, and Other Derivatives by John Hall. And the second one is Options, Pricing, and Volatility by Sheldon Nettenberg. These are considered classic in the field. Aside from books, there are also thousands of well-known academic papers covering topics like microstructure, multi-factor models, peers trading, volatility arbitrage. So you just search some relevant keywords and sort the citation counts. You can definitely find some high quality academic papers. But remember, reading these papers doesn't mean you can find some secret or profitable strategies. What really matters is you can learn how all the researchers structure their works, use statistical tools to do hypothesis, build models, and try to address some challenges in real quant finance world. For interview preparation, there are two most classic and well-known books, The Green Book and The Red Book. The Green Book is a practical guide to quantitative finance interview by Xinfen Zhou. And The Red Book is quant job interview question and answer by Mark Joshi. But personally, I think these two books are a bit outdated and sometimes are too easy for nowadays interviews. But overall, it should give you a sense of what topics to focus on and should be a good starting point for you to practice for interviews. Finally, as for the programming interview preparation, I think just keep working on median to hard level questions on lead code across different topics. Usually it's more than enough for most quant research roles. To wrap up, the first key takeaway is get familiar with all the core topics and adapt for each company. It's really important to at least get familiar with everything I've covered. And ideally, you should get deeper into some areas that interest you or align with the roles you're targeting. There's no one size fits all checklist because all the companies emphasize different things. If I were interviewing core research roles at Two Sigma, I would definitely spend more time on advanced statistics. But if it is Hudson River trading, I'll definitely spend more time on programming skills. What if like I'm interviewing an options market making roles at IMC? I probably will spend more time reviewing some stochastic asset pricings. And if today I'm interviewing for a trader role instead of researcher role, rather than high level math, I will spend more time on like brand teasers, basic probability, or even some game theory. So it really comes down to how well you understand each company's trading style, asset classes, team structures, and the role you're applying to. And the second thing that is really important is always be prepared before you apply. I have to say, most companies have quote on periods. Sometimes it is like one year, two years, or even your entire lives. This industry is pretty realistic and everyone is just so busy. So sometimes it is just so difficult to get a second chance if your first interview doesn't go well, especially if there's a fresh batch of good candidates coming in every year. So it's definitely not a good idea to rush your application if you are not ready. It's always better to wait than to leave a mark in your hiring system that could possibly hurt your chances later on. Well, that's all for this video. I might sound biased because all of my experiences are alpha research in hedge funds and prop trading firms. And I may not fully understand all the aspects for other roles. I might have missed some details, but I do believe the overall framework should be helpful. And I hope this video can give you some useful insight to prepare for interviews and eventually break into quant industries. Thanks for watching and best of luck.